Hello, everybody, and welcome to the pen ultimate week of 2020-2021 academic year. So it's the Head Teacher CCCU Assembly. And the way we finish now, that our year is really, really important because we know what we're about at the school. This school that is ours, year six, I know very soon you'll be leaving us and graduating, but this school, Grange, it belongs to you. You are a part of it and it is a part of you forever. You will be able to say, this was my school, Grange. And we know what Grange is all about. We have a caring attitude. We are not afraid. We are brave. We try our best. When we make mistakes, we learn from our mistakes. We go for improvement and progress. We're always about getting better, growing stronger, always becoming our best. We use everything we learn to help us to make good choices as we go along in life. And we never give up. We are CC learners. We are Grange learners. This is our way. This is our school. This is who we are. We know that physical strength is really important. Very important to, to eat healthy food, to sleep enough, to exercise. Those are really important things. But we know that the real strength inside us comes from inside ourselves. When we use our strength of character to be the very best that we can be. And that helps us whenever we face a challenge in life, something difficult. And life is full of challenges. We are brave. We don't run away. We embrace the challenge and we say, right, what character strength am I going to use to help me to grow from this challenge, from this problem. And that's Grange style character strength, confidence and consideration, confidence for myself. Every single one of you needs to be strong enough to say, I want the best for me. I deserve the best. I am worthy and I am entitled and I'm going to live a life that is the best for me. And that is confidence. That's not what other people think is the best for me, but what I think is the best for me. But what I think is the best for me, I learn from my teachers, from my parents, from my carers, from, from my friends, from, from research, I really will make it my mission in life to live with confidence, to work out what is the best for me, and to live true to that principle, and, with, and balance that always with consideration, always thinking that kindness is strength, that when we really care about those around us and the world around us, we make the world a better place, and that's good for everybody and for ourselves. So here are Grange pupils of power. Masood, you are always positive and always want to do your best. And you always give me great feedback on the assembly. You are a pupil of power. You give me hope. Thank you. Madi, you are always quiet, but so focused and so responsible in class. And what I've noticed with you is, it doesn't matter what people are doing around you, you live your life with confidence. You make the right choices for yourself. And I'm going to say something, that's, that's a power that a lot of us need to learn and grow with. So hold on to that power, Madi. It gives us hope, all of us, that power of confidence to make the right choices, no matter what people say around you. And then the Luther King Feedback Friday, pupils, all of you came in the dining hall and gave me feedback about all the things that you'd learned about how to resist the temptations and the manipulations of gangs and, and uh, drug dealers. That was very, very powerful feedback. I'm proud of you for the strength that you have. And again, live your lives with confidence and consideration no matter what's going on around you. So well done to all of you. Our character strength focus is on humanity and social intelligence. And our humanity is when we are the best of ourselves as human beings. Animals, they work by instinct and by power, which is strength. So an animal, often if you look at the, the animal kingdom, uh, that's just an expression, but if you look at animals, you will see that the strongest animal dominates and just and is, becomes the boss. But as human beings, we know it's not just about who's the strongest, it's about kindness and it's about caring. And we realize the better we live with people, the better it is for ourselves as well as it is for other people. And that's social intelligence, working out what's good for everybody, what's good for ourselves, but what's good for society. That's social intelligence. That's consideration, thinking of everyone. Now, it's a challenge because sometimes we just want to, I mean, as human beings, we want to be selfish. And that's because sometimes we need to be a little bit selfish just to survive, to look after ourselves. But we don't stay with that selfishness. We say to ourselves, what is truly better for everybody around us? What is truly better for society? What is truly better for myself to be the best that I can be? 
Now, we've all spoken about star sitting, and the truth is star sitting is wherever you are in life, you sit up straight, you track the speaker, you track what you need to focus attention on, ask and respond as a, as a pupil, a scholar, super scholar, a pupil of power, and you respect those around you and yourself, so you don't distract others, you don't let others distract you. And the way that we live with those others, that really matters. So, today I want to just share with you a story from Soweto. I've just put the sign of here, welcome to Soweto. Soweto, Southwest East Township. Um, Soweto is an amazing, it's like a city next to a city. In South Africa, when I was growing up in the 1980s and then the 1990s, so there was a terrible system which you might have learned about in history. Now, I hope you study about it so that, because we need to learn from history. It was called apartheid, and one of the laws were that people of different colors were separated and uh, you weren't allowed to live in the same area. Now, obviously, that benefited uh, people with, with uh, white color skin and that uh, really discriminated and uh, legally was, was a totally unjust system against anybody who was not white. And um, one of the places, Johannesburg, which was um, a huge city of opportunity, but just outside Johannesburg was this incredible, almost second city called a township, called Soweto, where white people were not allowed to live in Soweto. Anybody who was not white was not allowed to live in Johannesburg. I mean, it was a little bit more complicated than that, but um, just for now, just imagine that. Now, it was the end of the 1980s. I was at university. I believed very strongly that apartheid was wrong. I wanted to believe in the equality, the equity, the respect for everybody. And I was very blessed because I had a friend who was black and he lived in Soweto and he invited me into Soweto. Now, it wasn't that simple because going into Soweto as a white person, there were a lot of police around. And if they saw you as a white person, then they thought that you were trying to um, make, uh, to, to, you were against the government. And then the government were very strict at the time and they were punishing anybody who, who went against them, basically the regime at the time. So me being seen as a white person entering Soweto, I immediately would have been on a blacklist from a government perspective and uh, would have got into real trouble and difficulty. My friend, he knew Soweto incredibly well. So he took me on all back routes and we went in uh, around, we avoided roadblocks, we avoided police blocks, and we came into Soweto. Now Soweto also, because of the way the government was at that day, it all the money went into Johannesburg, but the money into so did not go into Soweto. So, um, money for infrastructure like roads and uh, paving and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't really there. So we went deep inside Soweto. I, I was completely lost. I didn't know where I was going. I totally trusted my friend. And he took me and it was such an honor for me because it, he could have got into a lot of difficulty as well. And he took me to his house and I met his family. And then he said, let's go to something called, you might have heard of this. It's called a Shabin. It's like a pub in the, and, and it's, it's a place where adults drink and socialize. So again, that was quite an honor. So he took me. I've got to say, everybody who saw me was like, it was a bit of a shock because there weren't white people there unless they were policemen uh, policing the situation that, that white people shouldn't be there and only black people should be there. But anyway, he took me to the Shabin. Now, the reason I'm telling you this whole story, because I sat in the Shabin. Now, in South Africa, South Africa has 11 national languages. And the, the African languages, although people can sometimes understand each other, like Portuguese and Spanish, like a bit close, like there are lots and lots of different ones. But I'll say one thing, it's incredibly difficult uh, for somebody who's an English speaker to learn an African language. Um, so I didn't, really didn't know much of the African languages. And it was quite difficult because I didn't understand what anybody was saying around me because obviously they were comfortable and they were speaking different African languages. But this is the part that I want to say to you about humanity and social intelligence. What was interesting to me as I was sitting in the Shabin with my friend and drinking 
um, you know, my drink while while we were just sort of chatting, my friend and I, and around me, and I could hear people speaking in African languages, but every now and then they just dropped in an English word. And I said to my friend, that's so interesting. Why are they using so many English words? And he said to me, they just want you to feel comfortable. They realize that, you know, you are here by yourself. You're a stranger. You don't understand the languages that everybody's talking. But they'll just use a few words just to make you feel comfortable so that you know what they're talking about a, a little bit, just so that you know nobody is mocking you or making fun of you or or plotting against you or doing anything like that. And I've got to say, it was it was an incredible lesson that has always stayed with me. Now, here in England, sometimes we have people who come to England and English is not their first language. And sometimes their accent stays with them from when they spoke at, at that, their home language all the time. And in English, sometimes to an English ear, that accent sounds a bit strange. And sometimes people, when when they they sort of like don't think about respect, they want to mock somebody for having an accent or make fun of somebody for having an accent. And I just want to tell you, I go back to those people where I sat quite alone, just with my friend, my one friend, but surrounded by people speaking language that I did not understand. They went out of their way to use one or two words so I could just feel a little bit more comfortable. That's the type of people we need to be. I never, ever, ever want to hear a Grange person mocking somebody for their accent or making fun of somebody because their English isn't so good. We should acknowledge and respect that often people who have accents speak many more languages than we do who are English speakers. And even if we do speak a lot of languages, Sometimes just think about that person who has had to, some, in, in their lives, move from one language to another language and learn a whole new language. How brave, how powerful, how amazing that actually is. So that's why I put that question. Do you speak a second language? Because if you do speak a second language, you know how amazing that is to be able to speak a second language. If you don't speak a second language, you can realize, just try to learn one. So everybody, let's have humanity and let's have social intelligence. Let's, may, let's respect people with, who have different accents, who, are dif who, who look different, who seem different, who come from different cultures. Let's see that as an opportunity to respect, and to grow and to be together. And if you see somebody mocking or somebody making a little bit of fun, I think sometimes be brave enough to just call it out and say, that isn't, that isn't our Grange way. That isn't the right way. What we believe is let's respect the person. Let's, let's find a way to actually realize and respect and work out who they are and learn from them. So that's just a story from Soweto. So remember these amazing values. This is how if we look, if we use these values, these character strengths, kindness, gratitude, forgiveness, perspective, social intelligence, love, then we can actually celebrate everybody, not just people who are like us or people who we think are fit in. So in the, in the next uh, few assemblies or moments that we have together, and actually next year, we're going to talk a lot more about the zones, which will help us to really get on well with people, no matter which, how we're feeling, no matter how we're feeling. Right, so gold stars of the week. Here we go. Parisa. Elias, Hewad, Ayub, Ajay, Lion, Abdullah A, Agash, fantastic amount of gold stars, brilliant, Stefania, Jabril, proud of your mirror, well done, Farhad, Pharrell, Aiten, Saraya, Zohaib, Blessing, Arzu, Diraj, Arzu, oh, sorry, I put you back there again. And Alia Q, and Mirthiga, and Krasian, and Sakina, and Shravan, and Danusha, and Oliver, and Arzu, I put you back there again. Thank you, everybody. Brilliant gold stars. Class champions, Mahdi and Gandhi, Dua and Gandhi, Sultan and Gandhi, Rashil and Gandhi, 
Lena and Gandhi, Pirahatas and Gandhi, and Aisha and Gandhi. Well done. Grace and Churchill, Diana and Churchill, Sarah and Churchill, Masood and Churchill, Alicia and Churchill, Maruna and Churchill. Fantastic, proud of you. Anastasia and Luther King, Grace and Luther King, Paris and Luther King, Anishant and Luther King. Proud of you all. Class champions in year five, Imran and Tubman, Zara, Martina, Mohammed S, Ol Tubman, Medina, Sana H, Ahmed and Tubman, proud of you. Ayat and Tubman, and Wasim and Tubman, and Princess and Tubman, fantastic. Jabril and Mandela, Stefania and Mandela, Abdullah A and Mandela, Krasian and Mandela, Saraya and Mandela, Abiz and Parks, Danura and Parks, Tebarek and Parks, Yanka and Parks, Aliyah and Q and Parks, and Asia and Parks, and Jewel and Parks, proud of you all, and Jousa in Parks, amazing class champions. Grange House of Water, there's your progress. Kautha, Yaman, Aliyah Q, Mustafa M, Zara Q, Amira, Nora, Shaili, Anna, Grace, Safana, Devesh, Stacey, Diana, Kavish, Suber, Pirahatas, Mariama, Oliver, Blinart, Sultan, Madi, Flying in his Parisa, Aliyah and Q, Maruna, and the swivel goes to Abdullah A. Well done. Grange House of Fire, there's your progress. Cole, Fahad, Yamindi, Vinaya, Eric, Ali A, Angela, Elfie, Simon, Shana Murthiga, Dania, Hewad, Ryan, Saraya, Patrick flying in his alias, Rashil, and the swivel goes to Jalsa. Brilliant. Grange House of Air. There's your progress. We've got Dana, Mohammed S, Imran, Hania, Raisa, Blessing, Diraj, Abdullah E, Sana S, Nur, Jackie, Zara S, Mehdi, Sarah AR, Krasian, Shema. Sabrine, Yusuf E.S., Masood, Hadil, Amrit, and flying in his Bashir, Dara, Dua, and the swivel goes to Bianca. Well done, Grange House of Air. Grange House of Earth, highest attaining house, smashed through the 6,000 point barrier only house to do that this last week. So well done if you're House of Earth. We're all inspired by you. Jabril, Stefania, Ayub, Aisha, Lina, Zikrea. Jewel, Alicia, Anushanth, Asia, Race, Tebarek, Danura, Anastasia, and Habiz gets the swivel. Well done, Habiz. So Grange Community, a brilliant 22,766 points. So who were the classy classes? Now, this is interesting. So the Gandhi class, you were top three last week, and you maintained your position. Proud of you, Gandhi class. Brilliant work. Parks class, you were top classy class last week and you stayed in the top three so well done and the classy class of last week look at it luther king crashing into the top spot of classy class luther king round of applause for you pat on the back for you proud of you all remember to really finish off especially with humanity and social intelligence so we set ourselves a crazily ambitious 100,000 class charts, CC points, target in one half. Time. We've never done it before. Look at us. We have made it. And why did we make it? Because we are powerful. Because we are kind. Because we are loved. Because we are great. We all belong to this amazing school that teaches us values and helps us to grow as human beings and fills us with knowledge that we can use to make the world a better place. We are going to make it. So we've had the Messages of Hope campaign, and that was Churchill class, and Hader, it's up already. So have a look, Churchill class, we're proud of you. It's framed and it should be outside your classroom. We've had Freddie, we've had the reindeer, we've had the pop plants. We've had the handprints, we've had the messages of hope, and now because we've achieved our target, last day of term, I'm not even going to wear a suit. I'm just putting on my tracksuit, trainers, and we whole day we will have forms of tournaments, cricket, football, basketball, debating, chess. Let's just have a great day. One last thing remains for me this uh, week to look at who was the classy class of the entire year. And that's going to be the legacy class. You are going to get to leave your legacy somehow. So I'll look it up. Let's see. 
It'll be the classy class of the entire year of 2020, 2021. Your legacy is something you leave behind to inspire others. So who will be that class? We'll find out this week. So, children, let's remember the lesson. Remember the story from Soweto. Remember those amazing people when I felt so alone. And by the way, in Soweto, I think it's about 2 million people live in Soweto. At that time, you know, I was really alone. I was really different. I was really somebody who stuck out. I was very vulnerable. And yet these people went out of their way in their shabin to make sure that I felt comfortable by dropping in words that I would understand and be familiar with. So let's be people who never, ever make fun of somebody for having a different accent, but who celebrate the difference. You say how wonderful. I, I, I appreciate meeting you. And I know that by by knowing you and meeting you, and I will learn from you and my life will be richer. So let's be great. Let's be Grange. Let's live our lives with confidence and consideration. Let's enjoy the weekend. Let's be safe and happy. Let's learn together, respect each other, achieve our potential. Let's be great. Let's be great.